Hey folks, it's Admiral Revan here and tonight we are going to be talking about and going into 10.9, the news updates for it, as well as talking about the new warships coming out. Also, the Clan Battles event that's coming up as well for the Piranha event and a few other gossip news and highlights that's happening as well in World of Warships. So just bear with me one second while this is going on. So while we're doing that, so we introduce our Stream sponsor. Rates. Stream Raiders Stream Captains has been very beneficial to us for the long term. They're a wonderful free to play franchise that you can interact with the streamer as well as the viewer. You can actually have fun watching the streamer and playing their content. At the same time, you're helping them out complete their objectives as well as the campaigns, dungeons, and more. One of the beauty things of playing Streamer and Stream Captains is free to play. You can sit back, relax, and enjoy with your friends, have a wonderful time, and actually enjoy whatever content they provide. Whether it's, you know, playing different games online to just chatting or even doing cook streams or a few other things, you can actually interact and have a good time. With that being said, as a streamer, you can actually host you your the event with uh, different the units you can play, and also as a viewer, you can play with different units and play some as you go. The beauty thing about this game is that battles. you don't really the have to fork up money just to buy it and play it online to with two streamers, to so you can actually boss. just help them out as a free to play game. In the long term, you can actually get some skins, you can complete the, stream uh, team the adds campaign new quests with all of the time. So there's lots always of good rewards and everything. But, to you know, your it's great, have what it takes you know, game overall to get some skins and everything. So I would highly endorse head this over game. To to start so, my friends, we are officially talking about, well, what's happening in, you know, World of Warships. So, there's been a lot of things been happening. So... Okay, as you know, the six year anniversary for World of Warships has been and gone. And basically, congratulations World of Warships for reaching six wonderful years. And um, it's been an interesting six years and journey in World of Warships. I have to admit that you have a lovely fancy design table. You also have some wonderful events that you can sit back and relax and enjoy but i'll tell you what i'm just gonna take a short uh, break and let you listen to this video which we're about to play it in the moment here momentarily You were right. The traffic is horrendous. Sasha, where are you? The important part is that I have the case. I'll continue to follow Plan 6. I need you here in five minutes. Right now would be even better. Wait, what is this Plan 6? Well, the game is six years old. Plan 6. Be serious. Can you take the subway? What subway? That's not our choice. Our route lies through the sea. See you soon, Agent Dasher. Sasha? Sasha! Greetings, Captains. I invite you to celebrate the birthday of World of Warships. Our beloved game is already six years old. Can you imagine that? Today I've decided to talk to the developers and ask them how they spent the last year. Alexander Uvarov will join us very soon. You know him as the host of the Naval Legends and Armada series. Such a serious man in a suit. He's prepared a pleasant surprise for you. While we're waiting for him, here's a small present from me. I suggest that together we reminisce on all the interesting and important events that happened in World of Warships over the last year. Ivan, aren't you in the studio right now? Wait. Oh! The sixth year was very productive for the game. We fully renewed the commander skills, and we're continuing to work on improving our systems. Gameplay variety is highly important for our game, and this year we've added hybrid ships to the game, as well as a new mechanic for inflicting damage, airstrike for Dutch cruisers. We've been working on submarines for a long time now. 
it was a long and interesting path to adjusting game mechanics and balance, interface improvements, adding new skills, and improving visual effects. We passed through numerous internal tests, as well as multiple closed and six open tests with a huge number of players involved overall. We're endlessly grateful to you for all the battles you played and for your feedback. Each one of you has made a meaningful contribution to the development of World of Warships in some way. Together this year, we've prepared everything necessary for you to helm submarines and play against them in ranked battles. Have you decided to stop by for lunch, or have you been taken prisoner? Where are you? Stay calm. My secret motorboat requires a minor fix, but help is on the way. What motorboat? What help? Enough of your stories. I'm backing you up the best I can. Hurry up. The oil retainers need tightening, don't they? Dear viewers, Alexander is going to join us any minute now. So to make the wait more pleasant, here's a bonus code. Now we have development director Andre Lusak on the line. Hey, Andre. Hi, Dasher. Hello there, players. This year we've been experimenting with temporary modes a lot. Key battle and the big hunt provided us with a new format for interacting with bots in a free-for-all mode. They helped us learn what diplomacy is truly worth. But the most important part of the game is the ships. We visited four dockyards and built so many beautiful ships together. Anchorage, Heason, and ZF-6. Deceivan Provincian is still being built. Five new branches have been added to the tech tree. And Super Battleships? It's so cool that we can see the evolution of big calibers and try them out in naval battles. Sasha, Sasha, where are you? My friends, I have two pieces of news for you. One is good. And the other is yet another bonus code. Denise Nesterienka has just joined us. Hi, Dasha. Hi, Denise. What do you have for us? Ranked battles are now being held almost non-stop, which means that you always have the ability to test your skills against those of your equals. If your skills improve, it's worth advancing to the next league. The rewards get more impressive for higher leagues. But sometimes we just want to have fun, right? Within the German Destroyer arc, we've returned to the temporary event format. You can choose a side to fight for. The Battle of the Beasts introduced variety into the way of acquiring combat rewards and united players to fulfill fulfill a common goal. Like other features, the format is still being developed, and in Update 010.8, we're launching a new event where you can choose a side, Aircraft Bureau's Rivalry. Sounds great. Can you tell us what we have for those players who prefer the hardcore style? Give me a sec. We've introduced a flexible system of limitations to clan battles. It will allow us to refresh compositions and provide for a variety of tactics right in the moment when a season is on. We've also reworked the brawl format. It's no longer necessary to be a member of a clan in order to try this fun battle type out, and both solo players and divisions can take part. Well, the COTS tournament is the oldest and the most demanding test of players' skills. Look how much it has grown. It has its own collection, big money prizes, and underdogs entering the semifinals. And, as always, the most interesting things are yet to come. Dasha, do you read me? Yes. Tell me, is the case waterproof? It's airtight and even fireproof. We knew who to trust to carry it. Well, then I've completed my mission. I'll be there soon. Could you just prepare a towel and hot tea for me? Sasha? That's all. See you soon. Dear viewers, while we're waiting for Alexander to bring gifts, we have another bonus code for you. We also have Natasha Mudrova on the line. Hi, Dasha. Hello, dear players. I've read all your comments on YouTube, and it makes me very pleased when you like what we do. We've reworked all the visual effects, and we're glad that you like them. At the moment, we're reworking all visuals on the maps, so your battles will look more realistic and epic. However, the maps aren't just islands and houses. An underwater world brought us a new challenge, and we accepted it. Speaking about water, a pleasant surprise awaits you. We also know that our players are very versatile. That's why we pay special attention to collaborations with other projects, and we strive to keep everything historically accurate and in accordance with canon. 
Dasher, no time to explain, and moreover, you wouldn't believe it anyway. Dear Captains, I want to sincerely congratulate you on our big shared anniversary and to open this case of bonus codes to celebrate the occasion. A bonus code that will provide you with... Dasher, it seems like I have a problem. Our game is six years old already. The game has grown and changed a great deal over time. We've seen so many new branches, nations, and even ship types. New game modes, events, and mechanics. This celebration would be completely impossible without you, our dear players. That's why I'm congratulating you on our birthday. It doesn't matter when you joined our game, during the closed beta test a couple of years ago, or on release, even if you joined us recently, it's your celebration as well. May the holds of your ships be filled to the brim with doubloons, and the clan treasury be full of coal and steel. May your loyal allies be close to you in every battle, and never leave you in your times of need. And may you always be the pride of your entire team. Hooray! Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate indeed, my friends. It is six years for World of Warships. So that is uh, one way to celebrate World of Warships for six years of gameplay, and it's great to be part of it. Um, now, since we're here to, and talking about the dev blogs, this is where the fun part is. So... As uh, most recently with the everything that's been going on, I want to highlight a couple of things. So basically, in 10.8, um, they wanted to talk about or got a torpedo bug. Honestly, <laughs> it is under you know in the works at the moment. So go ahead and check that out for yourself. Um, there has been a lot of um, technical issues been going on in the game, which is a bit of unfortunate. No, I notice. Um, Honestly, and <laughs> I just had to laugh of it at all at the moment because I saw most recently one of the um, funny thing is I noticed is about the spelling. But um, the other thing is I've been seeing is that uh, in World of Warships that um, if you hit your destroyer fast energy boost and ram into a battleship or cruiser and in the, or destroyer that's sinking. Um, your ship goes up in the air. <laughs> or if you ram into an island or something like that, your ship flies in the air. So, honestly, um, whoops. Now, let's talk about 10.9 and the announcement that came out recently. So, okay, this is the big one. Um, from the whole day stream event uh, that has happened most recently. Now... The biggest announcement is that the Pan Asians uh, line is getting cruises. Finally, at long last. We've been waiting for it for so long. So the Jungkung, Chung King, the Ramat, the Champron, uh, Harbin, Sin, Sinjon, and Jiang are coming out. And they are very nice warships to check out in the near future so basically they're starting off from tier 5 and working their way up to tier 10 and honestly these ships look very familiar actually to ships that we do know so it's actually going to be fantastic um, all of these ships are being developed based on real British and American ships um, the Harving project was a small cruiser developed by the USSR, which is good old Soviet Russia, uh, at the turn of the 1930s to 1940s. And the tier 9 and 8 and 10 cruisers have very light cruiser projects developed in the United States during World War II. Um, these ships, um, you know, will are distinguished by the small caliber guns, high rate of fire. Uh, powerful deep water torpedoes and rather low, low survivability, but they can be a pest and annoying, so definitely go check them out. Um, 
all cruisers have a smoke generator and consumable, so that's going to be good. And also defensive AA fire, which is fantastic. Um, they're effective against uh, anti submarines as well. So this anti submarine armament is pretty effective as well by the looks of it. But wait, my friends, here's more. Did you know that um, as of Black Friday that's coming up this year, that the Saipan, Pomeran, Yoshino, Loyang, and Dunkirk are coming out in the Black Edition? Honestly, I was a little bit disappointed uh, because that I've been looking forward to having an Enterprise. <laughs> Not a Saipan, okay? I mean, like, the Sang Zang is a Pan Asian. Um, carrier that you can acquire from the Chinese New Year and then as you scroll down a little bit further um, the Pomeran I understand that because like everyone has the original Pomeran or at least want to get it you still can obtain it luckily uh, through you know the printing shop as well and also the armory the Loyang is still available so Good to have. Yoshino, on the other hand, is different. I mean, like, it's in the premium shop in the armory, but it's weird, I have to admit. I'm not, like, one of those people that are sold by that I must, you know, go get kind of thing. But, hey, who knows? And the Dunkirk? Well, if you don't have the tier 6 Dunkirk, the original, I uh, don't know what's wrong with you. But honestly, it is a very good ship to get anyway. And it's got engine boost and all that sort of things. Um, there'll be some adjustments made to these ships. So definitely keep an eye on it. So that's actually pretty cool. Now, the clan battles is something that uh, people have been waiting for. Now, this year, around about uh, coming up very soon, is the 14th season of clan battles so there's a lot of uh, news coming up um, in the near future about what's going to be restricted in clan battles in the near future and honestly that uh, provides a bit of diversity in this gameplay so we're looking forward to it and basically the season piranha is actually takes place on tier 6 ships with no more than 2 aircraft carriers and battleships and per total per team. So it's a bit of an interesting gameplay that they're actually trying to focus on that. Honestly, um, it's <laughs> a bit annoying a little bit, but you know, the only thing I can say about it is that, you know, like, I was actually really looking forward to tier 10 battles, tier 9 and 10 clan battles. Um, restrictions in the current season, it's in debate right now. There's actually, you know, certain things that, uh, you know, a lot of ships can have in this battle frontier. Uh, no more than the two purse, Mysore, Hawaii, Leander, London per team and also the Rujo and the Andrew Lorenhardt have been restricted to be not allowed in the, in the clan battles. So honestly, um, as I just feel, you know, like, uh, some reasons for behind the band for it. I mean, like, look, the grass bay and the HSF grass bay were banned because of this and pretty much uh, they got a bit of a justification that you know a lot of people chose that ship <laughs> because of the torpedoes and yeah the reason behind that you know it's like they want to do a lot of shenanigans with it and it's a perfect way to do it then the Rujo and Henry Glowenhardt is another thing that they want to do as well the cruisers on the other hand for restricting a number of it, it's actually not too bad. Um, having two aircraft carriers set up, you know, the popularity is not that high, but the win rate is pretty average. And in, turn, in terms of the aircraft and 
uh, carrying battle shift it seemed to be average as well but having two battle shifts is actually pretty decent so when I look at the other things about like how the, the general setup for the you know for each battle frontier for the for each uh, season is looking like that people have a tendency to focus more on the battleships rather than having a carrier but some people argue that the having one at least one battleship and a carrier is actually more beneficial than two battleships but each to its own um so it really comes down to how you want to play it and honestly i have experienced this clan battle season already as it is so far and i can tell you this much that it depends how you work together as a team communication is key it promotes communication and a lot of teamwork so definitely keep an eye on it um it's great so far but yeah definitely worthwhile worthwhile so what was the other thing i was going to talk to you about ah yes that's right i was talking to, talking to you about a few things as well the Soviet aircraft carriers is actually out now. You can purchase them. Um, the Soviet aircraft carriers, as you can see here, it's available in the armory and the premium shop. You can actually buy it outright for certain ships. Uh, this one here, the tier 10, can only be obtained by random battles in the armory. So that's just random, random battles here. Um, if you got it, you know, out of the bundle, well, great, good on you. <laughs> so, honestly, the tier 10 uh, aircraft carrier is a beast. Um, so, it's definitely nice to have. Uh, this is tier 6 Serov, the Pro Beta. It's got a bit of history behind it, but uh, you can actually get the tier four, six, and eight uh, early access carriers if you, you know, complete the objectives and get the tokens uh, as you go and I think that's not a problem to be honest, mind you um, if you want to get a check of uh, animal pack bundle like I did uh, for content creator reasons um, I think it's a good investment to be honest with you but don't, if you can't afford it don't worry about it you always can get the basic bundle here later on down the track um, the camo is very nice though it's actually pretty decent and oopsie I did not mean to do that but okay but you get some tokens and whoa it's a bit expensive along the way there but in a way you get the picture there so before I go my friends um, there is one piece of news that I encourage you to check out as well is convoy defend and or destroy convoy mode it is a pvp version of operations where basically players can go up against each other uh, either defending or attacking the fleet and basically in the long nutshell this is about you know you having fun going out there engaging in an anti-climax battle and having a wonderful time um mind you though i mean seeing this in the long term it looks pretty damn awesome in march 1941 an act to promote the defense of the united states or in other words the lend lease act was passed in the usa that document unambiguously implied that the u.s were going to aid the countries that were fighting against the nazis Caravans of cargo vessels, protected by warships, carried various things that were required for warfare from the shores of the Northern America. A naval convoy is a temporary formation of cargo vessels traveling with escort ships that are there to ensure the safety of the transports. This dull definition hides an age of grand naval battles of the 20th century in the northern Atlantic, Arctic, and Mediterranean. One party was doing everything they could to protect their shipping routes, while the other party was persistent in disrupting these routes by any means possible. 
On the high seas of World of Warships, in update 0.10.8, players will be able to take part in a new temporary battle type, Convoy. Two teams are involved. One team needs to escort a convoy comprising four AI-controlled Liberty-class cargo vessels to their destination, while the other attacking team is tasked with destroying the convoy. Convoys transported guns, tanks, and other military equipment to warring allies, and these deliveries were a pain in their opponent's neck. Each convoy might not affect the overall outcome of the war, but could certainly affect the course of the war. A sunken cargo of simple ball bearings for aviation motors could prevent hundreds of airplanes from being constructed, and a lack of rare earth metals would leave dozens of warships without radars. The new convoy battle type features seven Tier 8 warships from each side. Only one aircraft carrier and not more than three battleships are allowed per team. Everything simple. You're randomly assigned to either the escorting or attacking team. Then you need either to protect the cargo vessels, which are moving along a predetermined route, at least one transport should reach the destination, or destroy all attacking ships. That's if you're protecting the convoy. If you're on the attacking team, your objective is to destroy all transports or all escort ships. Convoys follow their route for 10 to 12 minutes, and the protected transport can slow down, speed up, and even put up smoke screens to hide from enemies. The fates of the warring countries depended on the amount of cargo that reached its destination and how timely shipping was. That's why raiding enemy sea communications comprise the bulk of combat operations performed by surface fleets actively in service. Special combat missions associated with this battle type only will also be available to you. Completing the missions will bring you community tokens and other rewards. Detailed information about the mission completion criteria can be found in the game client. Good luck, Captains! And that is how you do convoy mode in the summary in a nutshell. So that's convoy mode. So basically it is a bit um, bit of a letdown in some ways. And the reason I'm saying this, and I'm not um, having to go wargaming in a bad way, but this is just my general view. When you're doing PvP mode in operations, um, one major flaw that I see with this whole thing is that they have the path of the convoy ships where they're going already laid out for you and the enemy team knows where you are and pretty much the way I see it I'm just like sitting and go like well this is just like you know um, you know a bit bad because you know I'm trying to honestly you know, predict where the enemy would be, you know, like, honestly, when I look at the positioning in the maps like this sort of thing, it would be better, in my opinion, if they showed the position where the fleet is, and then don't show where the path of the convoy or the fleet, where they're heading, because if they left it out, it leaves the players on both sides guessing, and creates a bit of, you know, a bit of fun, and you know, unanimous shenanigans in the game play field, like you're doing random battles and ranked as well, and also clan battles, especially King of the Sea. And honestly, with the path being laid out and players on both sides know where everything is, I just think that's a bit of a letdown. And that is the only dislike I have for convoy mode. Everything about convoy mode, in terms of you know, players going up against each other on both sides and defending the convoy, escorting the convoy to the objective or destroying the convoy to win the game mode it is fun. And it is. And it can be. So it really, you know, comes down to your enjoyment of this. So, my friends, I think that is pretty much what convoy is. Anyway. So, my friends, before we head off, um, there was also one other thing I want to talk about, and that is very, very uh, simply put, is that World of Warships is looking for more content creators 
to join the World of Warship CC program that's coming up very soon. If you are a streamer and you have what it takes to join the World of Warship CC program in the near future, there is a lot of prerequisites and requirements you can do to get part of it, uh, the program. Um, there's a lot of good, you know, content cre creators that you can talk to already and watch them and stuff like that. But there is actually a section now that you can actually jump online and actually start applying. There is a bit of uh, re requirements for, you know, YouTube and Twitch. Um, and honestly, it is a bit of like a, you know, a great thing overall for you in the long term. So just by looking at it, I think it's great. Um, the community contributor program is fantastic in a lot of ways for if you like doing giveaways, representing the franchise, enjoying what you're doing and stuff like that. But honestly, it, it really comes down to, you know, what you can and can't do. Um, it is pretty full on in terms of what you can and can't do in World of Warships. So you've got to be very careful uh, in terms of what is used. So you have to be very extremely careful about what you say, what you do, and try not to misrepresent the franchise. So just be careful, folks. I mean, like, uh, what you do and the World of Warships side of things. But until then, my friends, it's good catching up with you. I hope you're all doing well. And I'm just going to quickly bring you across to the end of the video. So, yes, my friends, thank you so much for joining in. And stay safe, take it easy. And I'm sure I will see you all later on. Uh, until then, please stay safe.